Hey everyone, welcome back. So today I thought we would dive into pouring latte art at home and specifically through the lens of someone who might not be a barista or might not have a ton of experience with latte art. I've done some tutorials in the past geared towards baristas and doing some more highly technical latte art and milk steaming, but that's not what this is. This is a few simple things you can change slash look out for slash be aware of when pouring latte art at home that might just up your game a little bit. Now before we dive into that, I want to let you know that this video is sponsored by Magic Spoon. Sponsors like Magic Spoon make it possible for me to do these videos every week and I'm incredibly appreciative of them. So head down to my bio to learn more or just stay tuned right now. I'd like to thank Magic Spoon for sponsoring today's video. Magic Spoon is a nutrient dense cereal that you can add to your routine at any point in the day. And what I mean by that is you can absolutely have this cereal as a breakfast, lunch, or even dinner. Because let's be honest, there shouldn't be rules when it comes to cereal. Magic Spoon has a variety of flavors like cocoa, fruity, frosted, and blueberry that will remind you of your childhood favorites while being high in protein, low carb, zero sugar, and grain and gluten free. Made to fit your lifestyle, Magic Spoon won't give you an immediate sugar rush like some of your past breakfast favorites. Instead, it'll keep you satisfied until your next meal. I've found it to be an incredibly tasty way to start my day before going into my shifts as a barista. It's filling, tasty, and let me give you my pro tip. I personally like using the same oat milk that I put in my coffee as my cereal milk. Not that I'm using coffee milk as cereal milk, but I'm, you get my point. Oh, yeah, and did I mention that it comes with some of the most colorful and fun packaging I've ever seen on a cereal box? Each box has a feature on the back, like a maze or a fill-in-the-blank story that'll keep you entertained while you finish up your breakfast. Think of it as a parallel to boredom reading the back of a shampoo bottle while your shower heats up, but this time it's actually entertaining. Magic Spoon tastes too good to be true. If you love cereal but want a healthier option, Magic Spoon is an absolute must try. At roughly $1.25 per bowl, Magic Spoon is perhaps the least amount of money I've ever spent in the name of health. The cereal that definitely sustained me longer than even the most overpriced granolas. So click my link below and enter code MDC to get their best selling four pack variety box plus free shipping. And head down to my description to learn even more about Magic Spoon. So the first thing I want to talk about here is latte art pitchers. Now these are not one size fits all by any means. There is a wide array of latte art pitcher designs, shapes, sizes, colors, anything you can imagine. And they all act very differently once you get used to them. There will be certain ones that might fit your hand better, might fit your hand worse, certain ones that have a flow rate that might fit your design style for your latte art better. There's just a whole wide spectrum. But this one right here is probably going to be your most standard. This is a pitcher from Breville and it is kind of a small to medium pitcher. I would say this would be best used for pouring drinks probably 8 to 10 ounces. You might be able to eke a 12 ounce drink out of this but not likely. Now you can see the spout is not too sharp but it's also not too rounded. It's just fairly standard, pretty approachable by just about anyone and it's probably the go-to that you'll see in most cafes. You could pick this up and probably pour a very nice design out of it but again it's not anything special. It's made to be kind of an every man's pitcher and that's really cool. But let's move on to some more specific ones. Now this pitcher right here is what's called a sharp spouted pitcher and as you can see the spout is indeed much sharper than that Breville I just showed you before this. I've had this pitcher for about two years and I originally picked it up from Slow Pour Supply which is actually where I got I think a majority of these pitchers I'm going to show you here today. Now at the time this was a limited edition release and it was designed by someone who is a world latte artist master. Now this is a pitcher that was specifically designed by them to replicate their style of pouring and to kind of show off their individual style. And and design preferences when it comes to latte art pitchers. I picked this up because it was fascinating and I really really liked the color but ultimately I found it didn't really fit my style best. It's made for very 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 precise control and to pour super super fine intricate lines and that just wasn't something that I always did so I don't use this pitcher too much but it is beautiful. Now on the complete opposite side of the spectrum you have this round spouted pitcher from Slow Pour Supply except this time it's one of their mainstays and I believe you can still purchase it on their website site today. Again, if I can find it, I will put it in the description down below. But this is one of my all-time favorites that I didn't expect to fall in love with when I purchased it. As you can see, it has a much wider, much rounder spout that lends itself to creating really thick, clear, bold lines in your latte art. And it has a much thicker, wider body than the rest of these pitchers have, even the Breville one before. Now, this is what I think they consider their 20 ounce pitcher, which means you can be steaming 16 to 20 ounces of milk and be pouring those size drinks. This is 
is significantly larger, which makes it really fun to use because instead of needing to use a lot of very precise wrist and finger movement, you can just kind of swing this thing back and forth. I like to think of it as kind of like the broadsword of latte art pitchers. Just kind of like grab it with two hands and just go for it. All right, this next one is a little bit of an oddball and probably something you won't see super commonly in cafes. And this is a handleless pitcher. Once again, I purchased this from Slowpour. Yes, I love Slowpour Supply. They're awesome, go check them out. And this is considered to be a round spout as well. Now, as you can see, comparatively, it is not quite as wide, quite as round as the bigger one I showed you before, but it still doesn't have that sharpness. So it's a round spout. This is something you will actually frequently see at latte art competitions. So if you go to a coffee fest, if you go to a world latte art competition, you will usually see this because it allows for very, very fine control and you don't have the potential error that can happen when you're using a handle. So super cool little tool. I don't use it super frequently, but it's kind of a fun novelty to have around. All right. And this last one I'm going to mention is one of my all time favorites for pouring personally. This is very much the smallest of all of them. And it's a very, very squat pitcher very wide very short I think it's great as you can see this spout is slightly longer than the rest of them which allows you to kind of dig into your milk slash your cup a lot sooner and start your design a lot sooner which lends itself to creating bigger designs more complicated designs all of that I'm comparing this Breville with it and as you can see the spout protrudes a lot more and it is also very much a lot shorter and a lot wider which I just think is a lot of fun and it fits in my hand super well which is something that you might discover you'll find certain pitcher sizes fit your hand better and that's gonna allow you to pour better latte art. so I hold it like this and it is fantastic okay Okay, enough reviewing pictures, let's talk about the actual application of all of this knowledge. So as I mentioned before at that past picture, I only really like pouring with it. I don't like steaming with it. So I always recommend people have two pitchers, one to steam with and one to pour with. This obviously isn't convenient in a rush in a cafe, but if you're at home, this is great. I prefer pouring with this smaller pitcher and I prefer steaming with the Breville pitcher. I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second, but in the moment, let's talk about milks. If you are making drinks at home, what milk should you be using to get the best latte art possible, both dairy and non-dairy? Well, for non-dairy, let me tell you what, you need a barista series. And if you're doing dairy, you need whole milk. Now, I totally hear you. Why can't I use 2% or non-fat? And let me just show you why. So in this pour right here, I'm using entirely non-fat. And non-fat lacks a lot of those fats and sugars that whole milk has that allows it to hold on to air and heat and give that really really creamy cafe grade milk texture so as you can see here there's a lot of separation between that foam and air that we tried to incorporate and the rest of the milk that is just kind of turned into hot milk now will this taste good probably it's going to taste like two percent or non-fat in a latte and that's totally fine but we're talking specifically about latte art here and when you're going for latte art, you very much want to have that higher fat content so ditch the non-fat and move over to whole trust me it's worth it it's delicious it's wonderful but if you're like me and you're a wee bit lactose intolerant we need different milks and i always recommend oat milk but specifically you will need to look for a barista blend or barista series i'm showing calafia here because they have both their regular milk and their barista series of available in stores for your average consumer. Now in this pour right here, I'm using the non barista blend. So this is going to be their original oat milk. And as you can see, you can pour latte art with it, but it's kind of slippery. It's missing some of that definition and I don't have as much control over it. So I'm going to swap over to their barista series and show you the difference that these milks can make. Now these are specifically engineered to hold heat, to hold air and to act like whole milk. So as I pour here, you can see I have a ton of control over this milk. It is looking super creamy there are very few visible bubbles on top and that's exactly what I want out of an alternative milk I want something that pours super well and also stays together stays all incorporated with the air and there you go so now you have your pitcher and your milk, but let's talk about what mug you're gonna be using. Because if you're at home and you're like me, you've probably collected a wide array of ceramics over the years, and you might not know it, but your mug actually has a very big impact on how your latte art looks and how you pour. So let's say you're using this mug to pour into, or at least something very similar to this. This is a mug that is about 10 to 12 ounces. It has very, very straight walls to it, and it doesn't have a lot of curvature to the inside. Now this is actually gonna make it very, very difficult for you to do 
advanced latte art or even to get symmetrical latte art. As you can see here, I have to fill my cup up quite a bit before I can even stir my design. And second of all, as I bring my cup up to straighten it, my design does not move down at all because these walls aren't curved and there's nowhere for the milk to go. So you end up with very asymmetrical, kind of like off-center latte art. And this is pretty common in any mug this size and in any pitcher. However, if you use a cup more shaped like this, you'll probably be set up for greater success. This is probably the shape you will find in most cafes. It has a much smoother curvature inside. The top of the cup is much wider than the base and it is also all around symmetrical, which is great. It fits in your hand super well and it's all in all a better canvas, if you will, for your latte art. Now I will be using this and kind of our final latte art demonstration, so just hang on there a minute, but keep in mind that you wanna invest in your mugs like you would in a canvas. And as I said before, we're just focused on latte art here. So use whatever mugs you want in your everyday, but if you're specifically looking for better latte art, this is the shape you're gonna want. As we move into our final stage and apply all the tools and tricks I've mentioned, I do wanna mention that having a high quality, freshly roasted coffee is also gonna make a big difference. This is a coffee that I released that you can actually pick up a bag for yourself if you wanna head down to my description, but it is delicious and having high quality espresso is going to make a difference on your latte art. Now, we have our two pitchers, one for steaming, one for pouring. We have our cup that is gonna be the canvas for our latte art, and we have the rest of our tools, which is gonna be the espresso machine, our tamp, our distributor, and a grinder. This is all completely up to you can use whatever setup you have at home. This is just what I'm using, and I think we've been over it in a couple of videos. And as I mentioned before, I will be using whole milk for this demonstration because we're just gonna do everything to the max. You can use your barista series of any type of alternative milk, whether that is almond or oat milk or hemp or rice or pea milk or wh whatever else there is out there right now. And then go about your everyday routine of cleaning out your portafilter. You want to start with it being dry and clean, weigh out your dose of coffee, you have your espresso, nicely tamped down. We will be pulling our shot out and let's see how it looks. This is honestly just some nice glamour shots of espresso because we can never get enough of those. So yep, looks like coffee, which is great. That is what we are going for here. And then afterwards, we're going to start steaming. A couple things about this. I have gone more in depth about milk steaming before, but essentially the gist of it is that you will want to be introducing air in those first couple of seconds. So you wanna hear that kind of paper tearing sound as you introduce air into your milk. And then after about five to 10 seconds, depending on how much milk you're steaming, you will wanna dunk your wand under and then start creating kind of a whirlpool to suck all that air in and then incorporate it throughout the rest of your milk. Now, you might see you still have some large bubbles on top, and that's where this second trick comes in, which is gonna be milk sharing. So I'm gonna pour my milk from my steaming pitcher just directly into my pouring pitcher. This will incorporate all that air that might still be left on top into the rest of it, and all in all, create a more homogeneous milk texture all the way through. You can also do something that's called polishing your milk, which involves bouncing it on a countertop and wiggling it back and forth. Again, this is another way to continue incorporating all that air that you've introduced into your milk because having milk that is one texture is really the ultimate key to having really, really beautiful latte air. So ultimately you want this to look kind of like wet paint. You don't want it to be chunky. That means you've probably introduced too much air in it, but you don't want it to be too loose. So you wanna have some nice surface tension to it. And if you can tell the consistency I have here, that's about what you're looking for. Now you end up pouring your latte air, you have this beautiful space and canvas, and ultimately, if you've done everything kind of correctly, you're gonna get some really nice latte air. I hope this information serves you well, and good luck. Thank you again to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this video, and head down to my description to learn more. All right, everyone, have fun with your latte air, and I'll see you next week.